Okay, morning. Today is day 98 and we have stayed at this uh, Kai Moon Beach camping campsite for 3 nights already. Okay, so it's time for a review. Okay, first thing off, right, notice that this campsite is very windy. Yeah, if you're coming or you plan to pitch a tent here or open your awning, right, you need to secure it down properly. Look at the tent. Okay. So at the car camping area, which is this area, our, our van is just behind me. Okay, there are multiple electrical points. Okay, there's one just over there. Okay, and there's another one there. Okay. Similarly for the tent camping area, which is just over around that corner. Oh shit, see? <laughs> well, our shit has flew off, okay. Oh, there. there are also multiple electrical uh, sockets to use. Uh. So over here, it gets extremely windy, right? Around 3 a.m. onwards. Yeah, the wind is much bigger than what you can see or hear now. Okay, so let's go to the toilet. Okay, the toilet, right? It's basic. It's spacious. Okay, just a shower over here. Okay. Toilet, bum gun, pills, place to hang your clothes. Yeah, it's basic, it's spacious, and good thing is it doesn't get flooded because like, the water just drains out to the drain outside. Okay. And right in front of the toilet, there's this uh, outdoor washing area. Okay, and place to dispose the rubbish at. Yeah, so. Yeah, like I said before, not all campsite has rubbish disposal service. So if there's one with it, yeah, it's really quite a good bonus. Uh. Yeah, so you just save the time of having to drive to the nearest petrol kiosk or wherever to dispose of the trash. Uh. This is one of the more affordable campsites we have been to. Uh. It only costs uh, 100 baht per person per night. So for us, two of us, it's just uh, 200 baht per day. Uh. Yeah, which is really affordable. Okay, the owner of this campsite, okay, he can't speak English, okay, but it's fine. For he will just come to your tent or your vehicle every evening, right, to collect hundred baht per person. So it's quite an easy process. Okay, and we didn't even need to make book booking. We just drove in here. Okay, if you're on Google Map and you are in Koh Chang, this campsite is the one beside uh Lotus, alright. So we just drove in here. Yeah, a lot of place for camping. The whole area at the back there is camping. Yeah, so I don't think you need to worry about making any bookings. So overall, this is a nice campsite to stay in. Yeah, and worth the visit uh, if you are in Kocham. Yeah, the view at this campsite is amazing as well. So this view behind me right, is the sunset view. So you get very nice colors in the evening. Right? Alright, let's go to the toilet. Our back door open. <laughs> <laughs> Was our back door open on the walls? <laughs> Was our back door open on the wall? So now we are leaving Koh Chang Island and we drove past a national park and there's one thing that Doms needs to do. Ding, ding, no. New stem. <laughs> nice. We're taking the ferry boat back to mainland now.
just left Koh Chang and we are planning to enter Cambodia today. So there's a bit of a massive cleanup to do. Uh. So normally before entering Cambodia and Laos, we try to finish our laundry because over there they don't have this kind of uh, laundry shop. And normally you need to give the laundry shop to wash, right? They take about one day uh, to wash and the clothes sometimes are not dried properly and they have a weird smell. So just gonna get all laundry settled and then we're gonna and try to enter Cambodia today. Okay, we are crossing over from Thailand to Cambodia from Ban Prakat, uh, border crossing. Uh. Okay, uh, this border is east of Chantaburi towards Prash Prum area in Cambodia. I'm 100% pronouncing it wrongly. Uh. Okay, so now we need to figure out how to get our passport stamp and cross. Uh. Okay, so uh, the last border crossing from Cambodia back to Thailand, I made a mistake. I didn't collect the PM2 form. Uh. It's actually the form known as the vehicle passport. Uh. Yeah, we only got the import export form. Yeah, so we are not allowed to exit uh, Thailand now. So the guys told us to go back to the Chom Chom border where I came into Thailand from and go there and collect my TM2 form. Yeah, and Okay, it's going to be a 5 hours, 330 kilometers drive there now. See, we need to go one loop there. At least we will be nearer to Angkor Wat la, if we enter from that area. Wow, shake balls. Okay, this is road 3395, the most eastern uh, highway la, in Thailand that borders Cambodia over there. Unfortunately, we have to drive here to go back to Chom Chom border. Yeah, at least uh, some part of it is scenic. Alright, another random pit stop along the way. This is the halfway mark to the Chom Chom border. Okay, and we found Peppery uh, Egg at a random <laughs> night market. Okay, and some 7-Eleven milk. Have a toast, chawamushi, and a bento set. Okay, off we go now. Okay, so five hour drive later, we are finally at the Chong Chom border crossing. Okay, this time I need to go to the arrival area and talk to them because the last time I didn't collect the uh, TM2 form. So see what they can do for us. If not, the vehicle is forever stuck in Thailand. <laughs> okay, so it's a very very close call. Just now the custom officer showed me that there's an $8,000 fine if we lose the TM2 form. Then I show him the uh, Google Translate uh, of what I meant. So then he realized that I didn't even collect the TM2 form when I left the custom on 4th November. Yeah, so he, he I think he was a bit very lenient to us. Uh. He just said, okay, this time I stamp the passport. Then he taught us how to get the TM2 form, TM2 form when we return to Thailand. Yeah, so it's very close call. The fine right for losing a TM2 form is eight thousand baht. Yeah, so that was close. So now we go over to Cambodia side uh, and try to get through. All right, so we just cleared the Cambodia custom. Uh. It's quite straightforward. So the first building go in, uh, they will stamp your passport, and that's where you buy your visa. Uh. For Singaporeans, it's visa free, so you just fill in your arrival card and then they will stamp your passport. So that's the easy one. Okay, for us, we drive a Malaysian registered vehicle. Okay, so after that, we have to go to the second building, which is just beside the passport building. Okay, over there, 
okay uh, they will help you register your vehicle entry and then the exit date and the exact exit border yeah so the guy told us that we actually cannot exit this border even if you want to la, because he already logged in our uh, exit border in the form later i'll show you that form yeah and another thing right that we learned today right is you can actually go to customs uh dot gov dot kh slash en for english you can scroll all the way down there's this thing called temporary vehicle okay you can actually go there in advance right to register uh your vehicle your name your passport everything there your entry date uh, eg uh entry port exit date and the exit port so you can register beforehand get the form printed then come to the custom so it will be a much faster process yeah so the guy registered for us uh today lah so we can start logging in now but i think you can also register for yourself online yeah so right now it's very late already it's 9 30 pm and we're trying to drive to a hostel in siamri okay it will be a two and a half hour drive all right so catch you then This is what driving in Cambodia at night looks like. La. So we are now driving from the Chom Chom Osman uh, Thai Cambodia crossing towards uh, Siam Reap. So there are no uh, street lamps uh, on the road but in general the road is bumpy but it's well maintained. La. So you can see that the pot the potholes on the road are already uh, patched up and we are cruising comfortably at about 70 km per hour. Yeah so you can see what it looks look like. Thank you.